Hi there, it's Natalie, your wellness consultant, and welcome to another episode of Wellness with Wisdom. Today we're going to talk about a superfood that looks like pond scum, but looks can be deceiving. Spirulina packs a mighty punch. The ocean has so much to offer when it comes to nutrients which deeply impact our health and our well-being. All the more reason to pay particular attention to the state of our oceans and rivers. Now before we dive in, pardon the pun, here is my friendly reminder. The information we provide is not intended to be a substitute for medical treatment. Please consult your medical care provider before using herbal medicine, particularly if you have a known medical condition or if you are pregnant or nursing. If you are worried about any health condition, it is always advisable to have a face-to-face -face consultation with a qualified health care practitioner in order to obtain a diagnosis and treatment advice. Now, what is spirulina? So it is an organism that grows in both salt and fresh water. It's a type of cyanobacteria, which is a family of single-celled microbes that are often referred to as blue-green algae. Just like plants, cyanobacteria can produce energy from sunlight via a process called photosynthesis. I hope you remember that from primary school days. So spirulina is, as I said, a blue-green algae, and it's believed to be one of the oldest life forms on Earth. It was first used by the Aztecs as an endurance booster. Spirulina is most definitely considered a superfood, an all-in-one source of nutrients, including protein levels comparable to eggs. The Aztecs used spirulina to treat various diseases as well, and legends say that the kingdom's messengers used the algae to sustain their marathon runs. Now, spirulina became popular again when NASA proposed that they could be grown in space for use by astronauts. Now, let's cover a little bit of the nutritional value of spirulina. Why on earth would NASA want to feed spirulina to astronauts? Well, because it's packed full of nutrients. So a standard daily dose of spirulina is usually 1 to 3 grams, but doses of up to 10 grams per day have been used quite effectively. So a serving size is a tablespoon, and a tablespoon weighs about 7 grams of the dried spirulina powder. And in that 7 gram tablespoon, you will get 4 grams of protein, uh, vitamin B1, thiamine, you'll get about 11% of your recommended daily allowance, vitamin B2, which is riboflavin, about 15% of your recommended daily allowance, vitamin B3, which is niacin, about 4% of your RDA, copper at about 21% of your RDA, and a good amount of iron, about 11% of your RDA. It also contains a decent amount of magnesium, potassium and manganese and small amounts of almost every other nutrient you need. In addition, the same amount holds only 20 calories and 1.7 grams of the digestible carbohydrates. Now, gram for gram, spirulina may be the most single most nutritional food on the planet. A tablespoon, uh, as I said, seven grams of spirulina provides a small amount of fat, around one gram, including both omega-6 and omega-3 in an approximately 1.5 to 1.0 ratio. So as you remember, omega-6 and omega-3 are your essential fats. We usually get them from fish, but you can also get them from a plant source like spirulina. And we need essential fats in our daily diet because our bodies cannot manufacture it, but we do need it for every single cellular function in our bodies. Now, given its high nutritional profile, scientists examining malnutrition have shown an interest in spirulina. Several studies have looked at the effects of its supplementation among malnourished populations, including anemic pregnant women and children in developing countries with high poverty rates. It was according to a 2017 review published in the Journal of International Medical Research. So, 
in your supplement store in the supplement department you can find spirulina in a powdered form which you could add to your smoothies it's available in capsules as well as tablets so think of it as nature's multivitamin first and foremost packed full of all those essential vitamins minerals as well as your essential fatty acids Next, we're gonna cover the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits of spirulina. So spirulina has a fantastic source of antioxidants, which can protect against oxidative damage. Its main active component is called phycocyanin. This antioxidant substance also gives spirulina its unique blue-green color. Now, phycocyanin can fight free radicals and inhibit the production of inflammation signaling molecules, providing impressive antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. Now, what's the relationship between free radicals and antioxidants? Well, free radicals are something that our bodies produce as part of the metabolic process or part of the working functioning of our bodies. Our bodies produce free radicals. Also, we are exposed to free radicals through our environment as well. Now, what free radicals do is they tend to be, as I said, an after result of metabolism and they can destabilize other cells. So what antioxidants do is they catch up to free radicals, they donate an electron and they stabilize the free radical so that it doesn't destabilize other cells and cause them to oxidize. So the highest level of antioxidants possible in your diet is actually going to give you the highest performance and the highest probability that you're going to have healthy cell replication and it has anti-aging properties to your cells, so preventing your cells from aging prematurely. Now, with regards to inflammation control, we can also talk a little bit about allergy relief. So the anti-inflammatory effect caused by spirulina's antioxidants may help people with allergies caused by pollen, animal, animal hair, and dust. One study found that symptoms like congestion, sneezing, and itching were reduced significantly in participants, and that suggested that spirulina may be a good alternative to allergy medications. And it holds some prompts specifically in the treatment of allergic rhinitis, which is your nasal allergies. And that was according to a review that was published in 2009. A study of people with allergenic rhinitis found several benefits for spirulina consumption, including improvement in symptoms like nasal discharge, sneezing, congestion, and itching. Now, why would you want to consider something like uh, spirulina instead of an over-the-counter allergy remedy? Well, over-the-counter allergy remedies absolutely do inhibit histamine production, and that's the stuff that makes your symptoms kick into high gear. The problem with histamine um, blocking is that over time, your immune system can habituate to the allergy remedy and then what happens of course is then you have to get stronger and stronger allergy remedies and maybe eventually have to go for the allergy shots. So the more potent the allergy remedy is, the more it suppresses histamine reduction, the more reaction you get over time. When you use a superfood like spirulina, which may help with allergies by regulating the inflammatory response, rather than suppressing inflammation or suppressing histamines, you're less likely, you're not going to habituate to a food like this. It's actually going to help to improve your allergenic reactions over time, in, other to, in other words, to reduce those allergenic reactions over time, rather than you habituating to um, a medication and then having to take stronger and stronger medications as your allergy symptoms increase in severity. So a good option to try. Spirulina, again, as an antioxidant source, also contains an antioxidant called zeaxanthin. And zeaxanthin is a plant pigment that may reduce the risk of cataracts and age-related vision loss, which is most commonly known as macular degeneration. Macular degeneration is tunnel vision. So when you, as you age, where your vision starts to narrow and your peripheral vision starts to degrade and having a high levels 
of this antioxidant in your diet provides protection against that most common form of uh, uh, vision loss, the macular degeneration, but also reducing the risk of cataracts growing across the surface of your eye. Now, something to keep in mind when you are buying spirulina. Yes, it's rich in antioxidants. Yes, it has anti-inflammatory properties. But you do need to keep in mind that depending on where the spirulina is harvested in the wild, it may be contaminated with heavy metals and bacteria. In a high amount, some of these toxins may stress or damage your liver. So you do need to be mindful of the source of the spirulina when you're purchasing spirulina. Some of the best best quality spirulina, so the cleanest spirulina with the least amount of heavy metal contamination, is spirulina that is grown and cultivated in Hawaii. Um, they've been doing it for several generations now. The nutrient levels are quite high. Actually, the antioxidant ratings are broader and higher than any other type of spirulina cultivated in any other part of the world. And when it is tested for these environmental contaminants, spirulina from that part of the world has the lowest level as compared to other types of spirulina. So don't worry so much about whether or not your spirulina is certified organic. Be more concerned about where the spirulina is being cultivated because that is really going to be the deciding factor. Now let's talk a little bit about heart health and specifically we're going to speak to cholesterol. So spirulina can lower total cholesterol. That's your bad LDL or low density lipoprotein cholesterol and triglycerides which are like the fats in your bloodstream while raising your good HDL cholesterol, which is your high density lipoproteins. There's a study in people with high cholesterol, and they determined that one gram, one gram of spirulina per day lowered triglycerides by 16.3%, and that bad LDL by 10.1%. And several other studies have found favorable effects, though with higher doses of between 4.5 to 8 grams per day. Now, why is it important that it lowers one type of cholesterol and raises the other? Well, cholesterol isn't necessarily generally a bad thing. Cholesterol is very important in hormone production. Cholesterol is very important in tissue repair and protection as well. So you want a good amount of the HDL and you want to reduce your LDL. Okay, so your bad cholesterol. You don't want to be blocking all cholesterol production because that's going to lead to further health issues. So spirulina in its natural state goes after the bad guys and it helps to support and elevate the good guys just in one single source. Lowering triglycerides or lowering those fats in your bloodstream are also going to reduce your risk of stroke. Okay, now fatty acid oxidation so there are fatty structures in your body that are subsist bleh, let me try that again there are fatty acid structures in your body that are susceptible to oxidative damage so remember i mentioned earlier that antioxidants are super important because they help to protect us from free radical damage while well, oxidative damage is part and parcel of this type of cellular damage and this is very common in fatty structures in your body and this is known as lipid peroxidation and it's a key driver of many serious diseases for example one of the key steps in the development of heart disease is the oxidation of bad LDL cholesterol and interestingly enough the antioxidants in spirulina appear to be particularly effective at reducing lipid peroxidation peridoxation in both humans and animals. There was a study in 37 people with type 2 diabetes where 8 grams of spirulina became uh, per day was significantly reducing those markers of oxidative damage and also increased levels of antioxidant enzymes in the body. Now why is this important? Well if those fatty structures in your body are damaged, um, if your LDL cholesterol oxidizes it means the hardening of your arteries it means plaque buildup it means blockages it can mean plaque breaking 
up in large chunks and flowing through your body and increasing your risk of developing a stroke. And the reason why the study on people with type 2 diabetes is important is because diabetes and heart disease go hand in hand. So it is very important not only for diabetics to manage their blood sugar to but also to be very very aware of what their cholesterol and triglyceride levels are like because they will be prone to elevated cholesterol levels. So using this plant source of this rich anti-inflammatory source, rich antioxidant source and also by the way having a good source of your omega-6s and omega-3s all of these contribute to reducing your risk of stroke to reducing that plaque buildup on the walls of the arteries keeping the wall of the artery nice and clear because if you're preventing inflammation then you're preventing plaque buildup essentially what happens is that the lining of your blood vessel wall can become inflamed and then your body will send cholesterol to the inflamed spots to patch that inflammation to give it a chance to heal and recover but if that patch that cholesterol patch oxidizes then that's when the hardening happens so you want to get ahead of that you want to manage the amount of bad cholesterol you want to manage the amount of oxidation that happens in your body and spirulina can do a wonderful job at doing that and as i mentioned you don't need much um, some of the studies were quite small in their doses but eight grams which is about a tablespoon a tablespoon is about seven grams and using it daily can help to create this environment that's going to discourage that inflammation that hardening of the arteries and keeping your blood flowing nicely Next on our list of benefits for from spirulina is uh, high blood pressure management. Now high blood pressure is a main driver of many serious diseases including heart attacks, strokes and chronic kidney disease. Now while one gram of spirulina is ineffective, a dose of 4.5 grams per day has been shown to reduce blood pressure in individuals with normal levels and this reduction is thought to be driven by an increased production of nitric oxide and that's a signaling molecule that helps your blood vessels relax and dilate. Now part of the benefit to nitric oxide is also that if you have better nitric oxide retention not only do you regulate your blood pressure you also improve blood perfusion to muscles which is part of the reason why spirulina was considered to be useful for people who are exercising for long periods of of time for example those aztec marathon runners if you have good nitric oxide retention and if you have good perfusion of blood to the muscle, then the muscle works better because blood carries nutrients and oxygen. So function is better. But also having better nitric oxide retention means that not only do you get good perfusion to your muscle, but good flow away from the muscle. So in other words, you're clearing all the metabolites that you're producing when you exercise. So if you're clearing that from the muscle, quickly and efficiently because you have good flow then you're going to reduce muscle soreness and you're going to reduce muscle inflammation those aches and pains or the tightness that we may feel after vigorous or long-term activity so spirulina can help with exercise recovery as well as with exercise performance so that stamina component that we're looking for and at the same time regulating our blood pressure now the second thing i wanted to talk about was blood sugar now animal studies link spirulina to significantly lower blood sugar levels in some cases it has outperformed popular diabetic drugs including metformin there's also some evidence that spirulina can be effective in humans in a two-month study in 25 people with type 2 diabetes two grams of spirulina per day led to an impressive reduction in blood sugar levels hba1c that's a marker for long-term blood sugar levels decreased from nine percent to eight percent which is substantial studies estimate that a one percent reduction in this marker can lower the risk of diabetes related death by 21 percent all right so 
if we're managing our blood sugar more efficiently, if we're lowering those excessively high blood sugar levels, we are dramatically increasing our lifespan. We're dramatically increasing our health and our wellness for those people who have type 2 diabetes. And why is that? Well, when your blood sugar is continuously elevated, it actually causes damage to your circulatory system. Think of blood sugar as little crystals in your blood. Think of sharp shards of glass floating through your blood on a daily basis. You have elevated levels that are going to cause micro tears in the lining of your blood vessel walls. They're going to cause damage to your circulatory walls. They're going to cause damage to the main organ that filters your blood, which is your kidneys. That's part of the reason why diabetics have um, a high risk of kidney disease because that elevated blood sugar is causing damage to the physical structure of the kidney because it's having to process and filter all of these damaging blood sugars. So take some spirulina on a daily basis and start down regulating that blood sugar over the long term. So rec- remember the indicator HbA1c is a marker for long term blood sugar levels. So this is not something that you take if your blood sugar is spiking at that moment in time. Spirulina is something that you want to add to your smoothies, add to your daily supplement regime because over time, over the long term, it can help with managing that blood sugar more efficiently. It is safe to use, but you do need to be monitored, especially if you're on medication. Keep that in mind as always. Let's talk a little bit about the benefits for the immune system. So as mentioned before, spirulina is rich in a range of vitamins and minerals essential for maintaining a healthy immune system. Like for example, it has vitamin E, vitamin C, and even a little bit of vitamin B6. Research finds that spirulina also boosts the production of white blood cells and antibodies that fight viruses and bacteria in your body. Now keep in mind, again, this is more of a long-term benefit. So you want to ensure that you're using something like spirulina on a long-term basis. When we talk about boosting white blood cells and antibodies, that's the long-term benefit. It's not something that can be beneficial if you have an acute need. In other words, if you're already sick, it's too late to start taking spirulina. It gradually builds in your in your system, and why are white blood cells important? Because those are the fighters; those are your soldiers; those are the guys that help to fight infection. So, graduated improvement in immune function over time. Let's talk a little bit about side effects because that is something important to consider. Because spirulina can help reduce blood clotting, which of course means it can help to reduce strokes, it may increase the risk of bruising and bleeding in people with certain bleeding conditions. So if you're taking um, blood thinning medication, also you need to be con- you need to be mindful of that. If you have a a, a, a blood clotting disorder. You need to be mindful of that. And with diabetes, because it may affect your blood sugar levels, so people with diabetes should monitor their blood sugar when they're taking spirulina. You may need to adjust your dose. So you do need to be keeping an eye on how you're responding to the spirulina. And normally we would suggest that you start with a lower dose, very small quantities and increase it incrementally um, and keep an eye on your levels at the same time. Now, people who have autoimmune diseases, so diseases that are connected to the immune system, where the immune system is over-responding and attacking healthy cells. Now, research, as I mentioned before, shows that spirulina can support your immune system function, but this can possibly worsen symptoms in people with autoimmune disease like lupus, multiple sclerosis, or arthritis. So you should speak to your natural health practitioner before you add spirulina to your diet if you have an autoimmune condition. Because in some cases, your white blood cells are in overdrive already. 
and they're being overproduced and they're attacking your healthy cells. So you have to be mindful of the fact that you may be adding fuel to the fire if you use something like spirulina and you already have a pre-existing condition. So please do be mindful of that and speak to your natural healthcare practitioner before you add spirulina in. Now, there are also medication interactions. Spirulina's health benefits may interact with or counter certain medications effects, including those that are used to treat diabetes, immunosuppressants, and blood thinners, and B12 deficiency. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, it's often claimed that spirulina contains high levels of B12, but its content is not well absorbed by the human body it's a form of b12 that is not convertible or digestible by us humans if you have a b12 deficiency and that's common in most people with plant-based diets you should make sure you're supplementing from another source so don't depend on spirulina as your source of b12 because the form of b12 that's available in spirulina is not going to be able to be convertible and therefore will not be beneficial if you already have um, a pre-existing deficiency. Now that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to respond in further detail. Keep in mind that you can also find me on my YouTube channel, Wellness with Wisdom, or on Instagram at wellness with underscore wisdom. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to have a listen to this broadcast. Remember that life is about making a positive impact on the people around you, not about how much currency you can accrue before your time comes. Turn your energy outwards and seek to aid those who will benefit from your time and your talents. And always remember to be patient and kind with those who are struggling. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider clicking the like button, subscribe, and yes, hit that notification bell so you'll know when next I post new videos. Have a wonderful day and keep well.